So I guess what we were talking about was that creativity is actually a process, but what seems to be advised to people is that they they look for the objective. The objective. You know, we're, we're trained to uh, get results, and we're trained to get results that get results. Get, paint, paint me a picture that's going to make me some money, or that's going to help solve the problem in animation, or that's going to, you know, show me what a thing will look like so that that thing can be manufactured, and so on and so forth. But that has little to do with your own personal creative process creative journey and creative journey and uh, so when we start to think about our personal creative journey we have this tendency of thinking about it in terms of objectives that have really nothing to do with us they're simply labels right and I'm contending that when students of the arts are taught in colleges and classrooms that they're often taught the wrong kind of goals. They're often taught cliches such as conceptual art or developing um, fancy techniques and styles and things like that. Yeah. And that when they are thinking about their own a personal work there's, there's no precedent for what they feel inside. And they don't know how to approach something that doesn't have a precedent. They're looking for the map. They're looking for the manual. And there is no map. Uh, because that's what creativity is. So do you think that if we say that animation art is commercial art, do you think there's a role for creativity and if so, is there a way to, to blend both worlds, or does the student or artist need to like keep their day job, go home and do their creative process, you know, at night and on weekends, and hope to God that that somehow filters into their day job? Well, I think that the if one calls. The, uh, the participation in a project that's a group project, such as making a film, I don't think it's a whole lot different than, than participating in an orchestration where you have a conductor. That you're actually being hired because you've got skills. Those skills will be I think ex your skills will be, I think, expected to be uh, brought in on the highest level. The question is, is, is there room for creativity in that? Right. Uh, in the arts, when making a film, I think that the composition is often not done. It's different than, say, a composer is in front of a piece of work that an orchestration is going to perform. It's often not done, so there's a creative input, but it's all towards a certain name. Right. When and, and I think if that doesn't come, then this, the film suffers. And in that respect, everyone is expected to bring something perhaps surprising and interesting to the project. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would. Um, but when one turns towards one's own work it's we often look at our own work with the same objectives when you think same objectives that are being required from us from this other situation the larger situation and uh, that framework may not be the proper framework for exploring in a way that's meaningful and that doesn't have quotation marks attached to it. And I think what, what you were saying about the fact that when, when an artist does endeavor to do that, 
that it's often very uncomfortable. Yeah. It's an uncomfortable journey because there's no precedent. Well, there's no precedent. You don't have, you, I mean, I'd love it if you would talk a little bit about what you were talking about this morning, which was no one can find your voice for you. No one can tell you what your art is or where your art should go. Right. But that means that all the ladders and scaffolding and support structures are yanked out from under you. You have no framework for validation except yourself. And we're really, ex I mean, some of us anyway are pretty externally motivated. Like mama pats you on the head and says, good job, little girl. You know, and you're like, cool, I like that. I'm going to go get that for my job. Right. You know, so for me, that's the discomfort that we're talking about is that feeling of flying, free, free falling, just free falling. It's exhilarating and it's terrifying and you don't know um, if it was really smart to jump out of the plane. Well, and, and again, it's, it's a process and uh, I don't think we, we've been properly educated so how do you, how to understand how to process without having a, an objective at the end of it. Okay, so let's just say that you're... And of course, the objective can't be our own. Because it's always depending on what somebody else thinks is good right. or right. Um, so, so let me just ask you a question. Yeah. Let's just say that your objective is to be more creative than I've ever been in my whole life, right? Do you think that there is a process that we could talk about or some hints at what one might do to achieve that objective? Well, I think or what is that happens. Pulling it out of your I, I think that what happens is when you say something like that, then you start thinking of all the most creative people and you start doing what they did. Right, right. <laughs> so one of the things is is that if we, we truly want to take a new path, we have to stop asking other people how to do it. If there is no manual, then you have to stop asking. One has to stop asking other people to guide us or tell us what is so. That means that one, if one is truly being creative, one is alone in this endeavor. And it's exciting, but it's also frightening, as you said. And as I was saying a minute ago, it's like a sailor at sea. You're going to hit squalls and winds and all kinds of things. It could be very uncomfortable. But instead of being frightening, we have to come to understand that this is the journey we were hoping for. It's exhilarating. We have no idea what the new land will be. The only objective is, is that we, we attempt to go out there to find something. I think it's an attempt to go out there to find ourselves. And how we define that can't be with the labels that have been pasted all over us. You okay. know. I have a leading the thou shalt and the thou shalt nots. We have a friend whose name is Resistance. Um, oh yes, there's that, there's that. And I wonder, because Resistance shows up any time you're breaking new ground, in my experience in it, from what I understand from other creative people, you're, you're about to, to make the momentous discovery and everything in you says, go get some Doritos and have a coffee. Go for a hike and why don't you make your bed? Might as well organize the linen closet, take the cats out for a walk, you know. Um, do you think that resistance is a symptom that you're on the right path? Well, that resistance doesn't seem to be too um, the kind you're talking about now. That kind of resistance doesn't seem to be too um, abrasive. It seems like it's the kind of resistance that gives one pleasure. Sort of like eating that dessert actually gives one pleasure. Playing with the cats gives one pleasure. Um, as opposed to the kind of resistance that says, you stupid ass, what do you think you're doing? That oh, that of. one. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are, oh. Mr. Creative Person? Mr. Creative Pants. Yeah, Mr. Creative Pants. Uh... There is the resistance question, which 
I think we need to address. Okay, so there's two kinds of resistance there. There's the pleasurable distraction type resistance. That's right. Right? And there's also... And then there's Mr. Meat Pants, you know. Right. There's the beast. The beast that comes and slaps you down. Yeah. Now, is, the, is one of them uh, more important to notice than the other? I, I think that... Or are they that, both just... Well, I think that, that in either case, we're looking for ourselves somewhere else than where we are. And that's where the greatest resistance is. I think that we need to find out who we are in the resistance, right. not by trying to get rid of it. I agree. So whether it's pleasure, I mean, maybe you'll stack three cupcakes on top of one another and laminate it. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? But maybe within that pleasure, one can find cre the, the creative spark. In other words, one's moving towards what's interesting for one, or where one finds right. itself. You can't demand that you go in a certain direction, that there's a certain right direction for creativity, unless you're demanding it because someone else said so. Yeah. So how else can you truly find creativity unless you find it in the direction that you're, you're already in? So I'm going to take the conversation right back up to the professional practical level of working in animation. You've got a day job, you're a story artist, or you're an art department artist, or whatever it is that you are. Um, and I have to say that that what I see is that we de what we demand of our artists is that they already have a deep well of creativity to draw from, because they have the gun pointed at their feet so often during the day. You know, dance, sucker, dance. You've got um, three days to turn this board around. You've got uh, an emergency presentation to come up with because Mattel is showing up and we need some ideas that we've never thought of before. Um, there's so much pressure to squeeze something out that's brilliant, imaginative, never been done before, has a singular voice, that I think that one of the job requirements for everyone these days is to already have a backlog of what they know, what they love, what they've been thinking about on the side and what really gets them juiced up so that, you know, I love abstract art and boy, I can approach this as an abstract artist would. It gives me a handle to hold on to that I'm already familiar with, you know, that I, I can dig into like, or, oh my God, I've been, you know, working on this noir film off, you know, on my own. It's an interesting thing what you're saying is that <clears throat> The studios are really expecting you to bring something to the table yep. that um, can surprise, inspire, yep. um, and harmonize with the direction of whatever the project is. Yep. Expect one to do that, you to do that. At the same time, they expect you to step in line yep. and, uh, you know, button the top button yep. of your shirt and not perform a beat on the drum that's cacophonous to the rhythm of the direction that the major ship is moving. Right. And I, I find that there's, there's the paradox. It's a tremendous paradox and it's a, um, um, absolutely true that with one hand I'm asking an artist to give me something I've never seen before, and with the other one, and I'm don't misbehave. And with the other one, I'm <laughs> slapping him yeah. because he's giving me what we've never seen before, and right. we can't afford it. No, we can't you know, do that. We can't do light beams shooting up the the fumper tubes. We can't do, you know, the the chameleon changing color on a on a mechanical car because we just can't afford to do that. So stop coming up with those ideas. You, be that's, you know. I think that's why it's so important for an artist to realize that the job is the job and the job needs one's total creative professional yes. presence yes. <laughs> but if they turn everything off when they go home yeah. yes they lose contact with the source yes ooh, they lose ooh, contact ooh. with the magic yep. that provides that allows everything to be possible yep. 
So somehow, one cannot walk away from the question of what is creativity, what is art, once one walks out of the building. Okay, can you change formats? If I go from being a visual artist during the day to a dancer at night, does that count? Why not? Okay. Absolutely, why not? One's still looking for what, it, what I said earlier is one is still out there in the darkness sailing that ship looking for oneself. Right. How else than through self-expression? So, here's a question. Let's just say you've been working all day, all week, and you come home so tired you can't see straight. How can you expect us, Carl and us, to to get a boner for creativity when we don't have anything? <laughs> we don't have any juice left. We don't have any our mojos, you know, we gave it the office. What do we do then? Because you say go back and dig into the source and we all go, yeah, 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 I'm gonna do that. And at the end of the day, we're like, I'm gonna put on some chicken soup and I'm gonna sit in front of the, you know. Well, that may be true. Now, one way to do it is to make good chicken soup. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it could be any number of things, but on the on the level that's possible for the the kind of energy that you have at the moment. Yeah. If you are in the middle of the air, you and you find yourself in the middle of the air, you have to sprout wings. Yeah. But if you find yourself at the bottom of the sea, you might need fins. So if you find yourself all wasted at home uh, without a drop of energy except enough to make chicken soup, make good chicken soup. If you can't make good chicken soup, then at least taste the soup. There you go. So it's you a see, question so the, of it's, it's, the quality of life. It's the quality, the, way the, quality the quality of the way that one uh, interacts with the moments of one's life. So would you say that creativity is actually a, a deeper urge to touch the magic of life in every waking and sleeping moment? It's how to live a creative life. It's about that. Exactly right. Thank God, because I can't go home and draw after, <laughs> after our day of work. Is that good? You want to awesome. stop it there, or do you want to sign up for this class?